guys, my name is Daisel and welcome to my channel. As you can see, I've been uploading a lot more Formula One, MotoGP, Motorsports content on my YouTube channel. And so I decided that I was going to make this kind of like a little series where I break down like a little guide to the circuits or the races that I've been to. I feel like after being to several races, I kind of have the experience to be able to help you guys out and also for those people who are traveling for races or intending to travel um, or have never been to a race before and are kind of lost and aren't really sure how to prepare for it. I hope this helps. I recently uploaded my Hungary GP vlog and if you want to watch the day-to-day -day of what happens during a race weekend at the Hungarian GP, go ahead and watch those vlogs. But if you want more of a guide to the Hungarian GP, this is it. So I went to last year's 2022 Hungarian GP and it was the best experience. I feel like there were a lot of things that I had to learn along the way and hopefully now that I've experienced it, I can give you guys tips and tricks on how to prepare yourself for the Hungarian GP. So the Hungarian GP is obviously in Hungary and is held at the Hungaro Ring and the closest big city is Budapest. However, the circuit itself is in Mojorod. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but I'm trying. <laughs> um, so let's start off with how to get tickets and what tickets you should get. So my tip for getting Formula One tickets in general is always get it from the official sellers. Um, and I always like to go to the actual circuits website and then go to whoever their sellers are. You can definitely go through the F1 website or you can definitely go through F1 experiences if you're looking for that. But I went to the Hungaro Ring website and then that took me to GP Ticket Shop. So that's where I got my tickets. So I find that the Hungary GP tickets are pretty affordable for the Europe races. Um, as compared to Silverstone, obviously. Um, so Hungary is a great destination to go to for the race. And for my ticket, I paid 186 euros. That's about 160 pounds, about 200 US dollars for the entire weekend. So there are many different grandstands and many different ticket categories for the Hungarian GP. So it starts from Super Gold and then it goes to Gold 1 to 4 and then it has silver zones 1 to 5 and then bronze 1 and 2. Um, there's also a Red Bull Tribune sitting area so that's different but that's within like the silver region. So I was sat at Silver 4 Grandstand. So after walking the entire circuit and looking at all the different types of grandstands and seeing the views from the pit grandstand and even the opposite side where the bronze section is, even though there are five different silver zones, if I were to go back to the Hungarian GP, I would happily book Silver 4 again. It is much higher and a little bit of a trek upwards, like uphill to get to it, but the view from Silver 4 is incredible. Um, you can see the straight coming towards you, you can see the chicane, and then you see the last corner, you see the pit entry, and from there you can see the start finish line, you can see the pit lanes, and you can also kind of see into turn one. So you can see everything, and if you look far enough, you can even see them at the other side of the track. Just like, really small, but it's amazing. If you were to sit below in Silver 3, you're closer to the track, so you're closer to the cars, but the view is might be a little bit obstructed, and you can't really see like beyond that. So if I were to go back, I would get Silver 4 again, 
it is great. Also because I was in front of two large screens. When you go to a GP, that is the most essential thing you need because you don't really have a stream to watch, you can't really hear anything to be honest. So to really know what's happening, you have to be in front of a big screen. So if you are booking tickets and you are able to see the map and to see where the screens are, try to book at least in front of the screens. Because if I've learned from Monza, you don't know what in the world is happening if you're not in front of a screen. <laughs> so I will leave that for another video. There's no gatekeeping here, so I'm just telling it how it is. Now that we're on to tickets, there's also general admission. I'm not too sure where the general admission zones are, but it seemed pretty easy to walk about um, the Hungaro Ring. Also, the Hungaro Ring is beautiful. It's surrounded by nature. There's a lot of uphill, downhills. Um, if you're over at the bronze section, it is on top of a hill so you can look down onto the track and it's it's gorgeous personally so when you're sat on a hill you're not really on flat ground and you're not like covered by fences and everything so you've got a quite a nice view off the track and the cars going past um, I am not too sure however about the access of these tickets so because I had silver four it allowed me access from any of the gates so I could go in from the gold gate and then make my way to the silver zones however when the race started I don't think I was allowed to go from silver to gold and then when I was at the bronze section there was another kind of gate I, I say gate loosely because there's no actual physical gate it's just people kind of blocking it off um, into the silver zone so I feel like if you have the bronze ticket you might not be able to get into the silver zones um, but I'm not too sure about that I just know that when I was walking in the gold zones it was perfectly fine except for when the race was happening or towards the end they didn't allow people from silver to go back to gold I get it maybe it's traffic control but I'm not sure if it was just because they were cordoning it off just to control the traffic after the race was done now we move on to I guess what a lot of people would be wondering is the pit lane walk how do you get it and what is it like if you bought the weekend ticket so like a three-day weekend tickets you are entitled to purchase the pit lane walk tickets. So I'm saying this as it stands right now, having been in 2022 and it's now 2023 and I think it might be the same setup for this year. I'm not too sure because I'm not going this year, but if it was based on last year's experience and it's the same this is how it works <laughs> they are a separate charge which is 25 euros per person but it is so worth it and this happens on a thursday so if you are traveling in and flying in for the race as i was land earlier so that you can make it for the pit lane walk so when it comes to pit lane walks you have to check based on the circuit because every race has a different kind of system so for the hungaro ring you can purchase it so the fact that i had purchased the pit lane walk tickets i wasn't too stressed out about having to go there and be like the first i don't know how many hundred people to get like the wristbands as long as I had purchased it in advance and I knew what time I had to be there, what time I had to get to the circuit to collect the wristbands, that's all I needed to know. I know that there were some people who were trying to go there and purchase it from the counter at the day itself. High chances are if you don't go early, you won't be able to get it. So when I went, I was actually standing in the wrong queue to collect my wristbands. I was actually in queue for the purchasing counter, which obviously they then led me to a tent that was opposite the main gate. After getting my wristband, I walked to enter through the circuit through gate eight. And that is the main gold zone where the pit grandstands are. And they kind of advise you to go and sit down and wait. But if you, didn't want to you could 
potentially start queuing at the fence for when they let you in. I personally did not know where the fence to go in was, so I didn't stand there. But I went in earlier because personally I wanted to have a view of the pit grandstand because I knew that my tickets for the race weekend wouldn't allow me access there, so I had to go have a look while I could. Um, so I went there, sat down for a little bit, met some friends, took some pictures, and then that's when the pit lane walk started. There were so many people and I guess if you went earlier or knew exactly what you wanted, when you go in you could kind of like plonk yourself in front of your favorite team's garage. But I kind of went in like, oh look, everything's so pretty, <laughs> um, filming everything and actually if you want to watch that whole pit lane walk experience i also uploaded a vlog right here and you can click on that and watch it it is an experience but it was fantastic so if you're caught up where the pits are make sure to keep an eye out because they will have driver interviews at the end of the pits so after the podium there's a little stage where all the drivers would come out and give a little interview uh which was cute <laughs> and Basically, I had no idea that was happening, so I only managed to catch the end of Charles and Carlos's interview. After that, I found a spot at the fence where they would walk from the pit building to the stage, so that was a great view. I got to see all 20 drivers walk past, so that was a perfect spot. And if you are lucky enough, maybe the drivers will come out, sign some things, take some pictures. Charles was going for a bike ride and so happened to stop and I was just so lucky to be in front of the Ferrari garage at that time. So a lot of it, I have to say, it is luck. It's no guarantee. I know that there are some other tracks that do driver autograph sessions. I have no idea how that works, but I will find out. <laughs> for the Thursday itself, I will say traveling in and out of the circuit was much easier than the other days. <laughs> and now on to the most important part of the video, traveling to and from the circuit. So for my experience of traveling to the circuit from Budapest, I was staying on the Pesh side and I was pretty near the river um, away from the city center. So I think I managed to get taxis a little bit easier because maybe I was a little bit outside of the city center. So I'd say from the Basilica, I'd be like a half hour walk away. So every day, from Thursday actually, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I managed to get a taxi into the circuit. That's my way in. Each taxi uh, was about 40 euros, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. I did split it with friends, so it didn't amount to as much as spending 40 euros every trip, so we did split, so it wasn't too bad. Uh, there are different apps that you can book the taxis with. Sometimes it really was a pain to get taxis. I guess with anywhere else in the world to be honest. Sometimes these apps work, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it took us half an hour to book a taxi. All in all, I did manage to get a taxi every time into the circuit. There are many other routes there, so you can definitely take a train to the Hungaro Ring and I think from the train station, it's about a 30 minute walk to the circuit, or you can take the train to the train station and then there's a shuttle bus from the station to the circuit. There are many, many ways. Another way in is to drive as well. However, I'm not familiar with driving in Europe, so I can say that you can drive. I know that there's quite a bit of parking, but I know you have to pay for parking as well. Getting in, however, is not the issue. Um, except on race day, I think we were stuck in traffic for like a good amount of time. The drive in by taking a taxi to the circuit was about like 20, 
five to 30 minutes each time. However, one time we were stuck in traffic and that was on race day and we were in the cab for like, I'd say like 45 minutes to the point where he was stuck in traffic. It was so bad. I told him drop us off here and we'll walk the rest of the way and that's what we did which wasn't too bad because it ended up dropping us off at the a little bit before the main gate so we could walk uh, so if you drive that's also another thing to take note because in a taxi we could just hop off but if you're in the car you have to fight that traffic to get a spot at the parking lot getting into the circuit is not an issue getting out of the circuit that is a nightmare. There were many ways I found my way out of the circuit. <laughs> the pit lane walk day, that day was perfectly fine because like I said, like not many people at the pit lane walk. So we just got in a taxi as usual. There is an official taxi company that works with the Hungaro ring for the Hungarian GP. So some taxi companies aren't actually allowed in the main gate, like the main road off outside the circuit. Only, well at that time it was City Taxi. I don't know if they change companies, but that's the official taxi company. Um, other taxis will have to drop you outside and you'd have to walk. So keep that in mind, there's only like certain official companies that are allowed into the circuit. Second day, which was free practice day, that was the day that we decided to try the shuttle bus route. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it was the longest queue for the shuttle bus I've ever seen because on the Friday, it was about a two to three hour wait for the taxi line and like a three hour wait around there for the bus line. Um, the thing is, we weren't going to do the taxi line because it didn't look like it was moving. So I was like, okay, never mind. Uh, let's try the bus route. So we got, after waiting, we got on the shuttle bus and that shuttle bus will take you to a train station. That train, that's a railway train, that will take you to another train station, which is essentially their metro, and then that train will take you into Budapest city itself. And then from that station, then it was a walk back to where my accommodation was. It was pretty easy once you got on the train. I think the main issue was waiting because you'd have to queue to get on the bus and then when you're at the train station, you're not hopping on the train immediately. You'd have to queue to get on the train because the buses are just loading people off at the train station. So there's another like wait at the train station. They do try to fit as many because these trains are huge. But again, there's no air conditioning on the train, whatever. And that period of time in Hungary was boiling hot. So we were in a pretty hot, sticky, sweaty train <laughs> cabin. So if you were to take the bus, they will either drop you off at Karapesh or Silashliget station. Train tickets and everything are available. There's an app for it as well. You can buy like a one day pass, that kind of thing. If I'm not wrong, that's how I did it. Uh, the shuttle buses are free. That's the good thing. Uh, and it's obviously cost-wise doing the buses, the train, the shuttle. It's going to be much lesser than taking a taxi in and out. Another thing about the taxis going out of the circuit is if you take the official taxi, so if you stand outside the Hangaro ring in this kind of disorganized queue, pretty massive disorganized queue, when you get to the front and you get in the taxi, it is a fixed fare. So it shouldn't be more than 50 euros. Yeah, it's regulated, at least with the official taxi company. If you find yourself outside of the circuit with one of these other taxi companies that I said weren't affiliated with the Hungaro ring, they will charge you into the hundreds. Like extortionate prices. It's ridiculous. I think we asked 
someone at one of these train stations because we didn't want to wait for the train we asked the taxi driver like can you take us there were quite a few of us willing to get into a taxi and share it the guy said 300 <laughs> 300 euros um absolutely not absolutely not extortionate so if you want to get a taxi just get in line for the official taxi and don't even bother with these other taxis because they will charge you crazy prices and then obviously if you're driving all you gotta do is wait in traffic there is one more option and this is an option you have to pre-plan for because I wanted to do it but I didn't plan for it and I regret it but you are able to book a helicopter out of the circuit uh, the helicopter is a transport form that is offered at the Hungara ring outside of the main gate there is a helipad area where you can see helicopters taking off and coming in and landing etc etc so basically I saw this service on the Thursday when I was there for the pit lane walk and I was like, oh, this is really cool. But I kind of also thought that it was like a helicopter ride to see the circuit. I didn't think that it was also a way out of the circuit. So my friend and I was just like having a look, you know, whatever. After experiencing the nightmare of <laughs> queuing so long for the bus and for the taxi on the Friday and the Saturday, my friend and I were like, we're booking the helicopter we were like i don't care what we are booking the helicopter because i know race day is going to be manic it's going to take ages to get out of the circuit let's book the helicopter and we were down we were down i went online i checked the prices i was like i'm putting aside this amount of money for the helicopter so it was 190 euros per person for the helicopter ride that's a lot of money for a form of transport but in my head i was thinking firstly i was gonna be so exhausted from the entire weekend already secondly i just wanted to get back to the hotel like at this point the adrenaline has worn off i just want to be comfortable i just want to get back to the hotel i don't really care i just want a comfortable way out Third, I thought it would be an amazing way to end the race weekend by flying over the circuit and having a bird's eye view of the Hungara ring. I think that would have been amazing. Fourth, I'd never been in a helicopter before. I, you know, you're kind of paying for the experience. I think it was going to be great. So our minds were set on it at the gold side at gate eight that's where the helicopter was so we had to get out of gate three and walk the big round around the hungara ring to go back to gate eight where we could inquire about the helicopter we got into the line for the helicopter and it was fully booked because these people all these people they knew <laughs> if you want to have this experience and if you want to save yourself some time Book the helicopter ride in advance because now looking back, I think it would have been a really good idea. So anyways, what happened on the fourth day, so race day, how we got out of the circuit. So taxi line for the race day was even worse than the couple of days before. Even worse. I don't even know how long that line would have lasted. I, I stood in it for a good 45 minutes and it did not move. I did not move from my spot. So I was like, gonna give this up. The shuttle bus is not an option. It's also a huge line. It was so much people at the train stations and I had intel from <laughs> everywhere saying, no, like don't even try like the shuttle buses because they're not even letting people into the train station. And then at the other station, it was so packed with people. It was gonna be another couple hours wait. So. The last and final option you have is to walk. So we decided that we were going to head to Moyerod station, which is an hour's walk from the circuit. And it is the station that is 
one station after the stations that the buses were dropping you off at. So basically, if you get onto that train, you will be entering the train station that's full of fans waiting. Do you know what I mean? It's the train station before these stations. So you're walking an hour just to kind of beat the crowds, except it was after a rainy race weekend. So it was a little bit muddy. We were walking in some random Hungarian fields, uh, dirt roads, dirt tracks, random neighborhoods with like massive houses. I mean, they were great to see. And this is really like the, ru the rural part of Hungary. In hindsight, was it safe for two girls to be walking alone in the Hungarian countryside? I'm not sure. However, nothing happened to us and generally like surprisingly there weren't other people walking as well. Like we were at some point we were completely alone and I was just hoping and praying that Google Maps was taking me where I had to go. Um, I wasn't as worried because I had a friend who had done this walk the day before and that's why we decided to take this route because she had done it with her dad. So it was pretty safe, it was pretty okay. When we got to the actual train station, completely empty, completely empty. And then I think like there were two other groups of F1 fans who came. And then by the time we, we had to wait like another like 15, 20 minutes for the next train to come, it was sunset already. So thankfully we weren't walking in the dark because if it gets to a point where it's nightfall and sunset has happened, I don't really recommend that walk because there's no lights. So when we got on the train, it was perfectly fine, perfectly empty. We could get a seat, which was great. And yeah, and then when we went to the next station, true enough, it was all the F1 fans who boarded. And then afterwards, it was just like a smooth sailing journey home. So that wraps up all of the ways in and out of the circuit. Now we're moving on to the next section, which is off-track activities. So basically, there are fan zones, right? Comparing to other circuits, some of them have like a central fan zone area, especially since I'm comparing it to like Singapore and Silverstone. Um, they have a central fan zone area. The Hangara Ring doesn't, so they've kind of split it up in a way that some of the activities are at the Silver 5 area, and then the other activities are all the way at the other end of the circuit at the bronze section. If you really wanna complete all of like the off-track activities, like the pit stop challenge, the reaction challenge, um, several other things like the simulators and stuff like that. So it's all around there. In terms of merch, there's a lot of merch just peppered around the circuit. There is also a lot of merch outside the circuit. And in fact, I kind of had more fun looking at all the merch outside the circuit than in the circuit, because obviously in the circuit is like this year's team kit, but outside is all like shirts and merch from past years, vintage merch, just caps from all seasons, all like GPs. It's great. It's a lot of fun. Spent way too much money, obviously, on all this merch, but hey, I feel like when you're at the GP, you kind of have to. Like, when, when else are you going to be there, right? So another thing is food and drinks at the circuit. At the Hungara Ring, they did have like a program where you were given these like reusable cups with your drink and then you could return it for a token and then you could use the token to purchase another drink, something like that. I didn't actually do it because I actually wanted to keep the reusable cups. There were four different designs and I like collected all of them. They had a lot of food. I didn't eat anything. They looked really interesting though, but I didn't eat anything. Drinks, I did buy a lot of drinks. I had a lot of slushies because I was just so thirsty all the time. And they do have cocktails. I did buy a bucket <laughs> of cocktail and it was not cheap. I think it was about 20,000 foreign, which maybe was about like 
50 euros, so 40 pounds, something like that, something extortionate. However, it was very strong, um, so it was kind of worth it. So in terms of food and drinks, it's going to be above the average pricing, and I think you can expect that at every GP where, you know, they will try to milk it when it comes to getting you to pay for food and drinks. Um, in terms of toilet facilities, it's not the best, um, but it's also better than some. I think there are pretty okay toilets on the circuit, but I feel like you kind of just have to like manage expectations. I mean, you're in a field somewhere, like it's going to be your usual like porta potty situation. Um, so that's what it's like. And lastly, before I wrap up this video, the one last thing is I would say prepare for all weather conditions because um, it rained and we had a wet um, free practice three. And thankfully I had uh, my Red Bull windbreaker on. We did buy ponchos the previous day for five euros. And that was essential because we managed to get it the day before, even though it was sunny, because we kind of knew that we were prepping for the week and terrain. But obviously they were running out of ponchos. Also keep in mind that the only covered grandstand in the Hungara ring is the super gold grandstand. The other grandstands are all not sheltered. So that's what I mean by you really have to prepare rain or shine for these events. And lastly, the circuit is open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. and if you wanna catch the drivers driving in and out leaving the circuit, you can also wait at the main entrance where the giant Hungaro ring sign is. So, I feel like I have talked your ear off, but that is kind of my condensed guide to the Hungarian GP. I hope you guys found this video informative, and if you like this video, I will definitely try to do one for Silverstone. I will definitely do one for Monza, and I will try to do one for Singapore as well. I unfortunately can only advise on the Grand Prix that I've been to. That being said, I do hope that I manage to check off more circuits and Grand Prix on my list and we can keep this series running. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helps. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you have any more questions, comment below and I'll try my best to answer it if I haven't answered it already in this video. And I guess that's about it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!